This is an entirely 3D printed RC car that I built completely from scratch. Now this project actually started in my last video where I built an RC car that has four wheel drive and four wheel steering. And this thing was awesome. <clears throat> but there's one major problem with this. It's got wheels and wheels are cringe. I know, I know, it's embarrassing. Everyone else was using wheels and I just followed along. Wake up sheeple. Wheels are so like, hold on. Fourth millennium BC. We're gonna fix this. After many restless nights, I really need to sleep more. <laughs> we have the world's first cyber tank. Now to start the modifications, I need to get rid of these wheels. Luckily, they come off pretty easy. And next up, I need to add some tracks. The goal is to make this DIY and completely 3D printed. So I went into Onshape and started designing. What I came up with looks like this. This design uses one drive gear and four rollers to move the track around in a triangle shape. And hopefully it should interface with our existing car design pretty easily. If you'd like to replicate this yourself, a link to the full CAD and Onshape is available in the description below. And as always, it's completely free. Now taking this design from CAD to the real world is where 3D printing comes in. Most of these parts were just made with normal FDM printing and a lot of the parts are just PLA. I did print a couple in carbon fiber nylon just to make things a little bit more rigid, but I'm not sure it was really necessary. After printing what felt like a thousand track links, as well as all the drive wheels and roller wheels, we have everything we need to assemble the drive system. A modified steering knuckle gets attached to the car, which has a new support arm for attaching to the tracks. Then the base of the track assembly can be put together with some bearings and bolts. I will also put links to all this hardware in the description below if you guys are looking to replicate this. If you enjoy these projects and you are looking for ways to support the channel, I started a Patreon a few months ago where I post a lot of updates and sneak peeks of future projects. So if that's something that interests you, there's also a link to that in the description. Attaching the tracks to the car is actually really simple and only requires a couple bolts. Additionally, a nut gets added to the end of the axle to keep everything in place. This is basically just the RC equivalent of the lug nuts in your car. The tracks then get installed by just wrapping them around the rollers and drive gear. The tracks themselves are just held together using some 3mm screws. These screws also act as a pivot point, allowing the track to roll smoothly. And then the holes in the track design actually interface with the drive gear that's attached to the axles. This makes everything spin around. Unfortunately, with these tracks installed, there's now an interference between the tracks themselves and this middle body section. Luckily, this is really easy to solve just by snipping away some of the plastic. This will fix it. <laughs> Similarly, on the body, the wheel wells are just made for wheels, not tracks. Therefore, some trimming is needed. I just used this oscillating tool to cut away some plastic, and it worked great. With all the modifications complete, the body can now get installed. The body is split into two different pieces just to make it easier to print, and it gets attached using some small bolts. In this design, the windshield is removable to give you access to the wires and the batteries and things like that. Moment of truth here. That looks awesome. This looks so cool. <laughs> so with all the stuff I added, I was really anxious to test this out. Taking it out to the backyard, I gave it a quick test drive and realized that this actually worked really well. The additional ground clearance allows it to get over obstacles, and this thing is still really quick. To get a little more room to drive around, I took this to a local park where I could really test it out. In the grass, this thing is really fast, like faster than it was with wheels. And I think during this testing, I never got the throttle above about 50%. This thing is now also able to climb really steep hills, no problem. Additionally, it had no issues in loose dirt, which sometimes can clog tracks and things like that. However, I do feel like the tracks need a little bit more grip. Currently, the tracks don't really have any tread, so the motors can just do like a four-wheel drive tracked burnout, which is pretty cool, but not great for off-roading. I even managed to get stuck going over these wood blocks while I was testing, and we can't be having this thing getting stuck. Getting stuck with tracks is just embarrassing. To fix the traction issue, I didn't want to reprint all the links, so I printed out these little tread pieces, which fit in the notches in each one of the tracks. 
I just super glued these in place, which is hopefully strong enough. With these installed, the tracks are definitely way more aggressive, so hopefully it's now impossible to get this thing stuck. To really test this design, I want to drive it in snow. However, the Midwest weather has really not been cooperating. This is ridiculous. It's going to be like 12 degrees for the next 10 days. There's not a single inch of snow. So to fix this, I took matters into my own hands. I went to the hardware store and got a whole bunch of pipe fittings and started assembling. Now it's going to be like 8 degrees Fahrenheit outside, which for those metric people out there, that's like negative 13 degrees. So all I really need to do is atomize the water and we should have snow. By attaching this pipe contraption to a pressure washer and an air compressor, we were pretty much right away making snow. And it really surprised me how well this thing worked. I got this idea from watching some other videos online, and people were saying they could make almost an inch an hour with this method. All right, we're making snow, slowly but surely. After about 45 minutes, I decided I was happy with the amount of snow, because this is just for testing, and I didn't want to be too much of a nuisance to my neighbors. All right, after doing this for like, 30 minutes till I got tired of doing it. We do have a decent amount of snow. It's not the best snow, definitely pretty icy, but it should be good enough for some simple testing. These trees were right in the way of where I was spraying them. Look at that, they're covered in ice. That's crazy. Now, originally I was gonna call it good after just testing in this homemade snow, but honestly, I wasn't really happy with the amount that I had, and I felt like it wasn't really a good test. Luckily, while I was procrastinating editing this video, we actually finally got a snowstorm. So now we can do some actual testing. All right, here we go. Let's see what this thing can do in the snow. Oh yeah. Putting tracks on this RC car makes it so much fun to drive. It can literally go just about anywhere, and it also just looks pretty cool. The track system does make it harder on some of the components like the axles, but overall it still works really well. All right, that's a wrap. Well, we lost a track, and the entire inside here is just full of snow, but it drove really, really well. I'm still impressed with this thing. For being all 3D printed, that's crazy. Oh my God, it's cold. All right, get to the car, get to the car, get to the car. I cannot emphasize enough how cold it is. I think the forecast is it's supposed to feel like negative two right now. Oh, oh my God, my hands, I can't feel my hands. Cannot feel my hands. After all this testing, there is still one important question left, and that is, can it jump? Now this thing came down pretty hard on the front left corner, but somehow it drove away no problem. After this, I built a bigger jump that was a little bit less steep. This time I was still pressing the throttle mid-air, which means when it came down, the spinning tracks hit the ground, which pretty much broke all four axles immediately. So there's still definitely some room for improvement in this design. And if you guys have any other ideas on modifications or things I can do with this, put them down in the comments below. But that's all for this project, so I'll see you guys in the next one.